In this section, you will learn about your first unsupervised learning algorithm. This popular technique allows you to mine large data sets to find interesting relationships, which are then called association rules. In this section, we will look at first how market basket analysis uses association rules to find products that go well together so that you can develop a recommendation engine. After introducing the concepts, we move to the implementation part and explore how you can set up and analyze your transaction data and get them ready for the analysis. Then we look at how you can implement the a priori algorithm, which actually makes this analysis manageable from a computational perspective. Next, we look at how to calculate the association rules from your data, and then look at how you visualize and interpret the results. In this first video, we dive into market basket analysis and how it works to identify products that are frequently purchased together. We will look at how you can find and evaluate association rules. We will look at how you can act on the results uh, of this analysis and how you can apply association rules beyond market basket analysis because there are many other use cases available. Now, I've already said that the goal of market basket analysis is to find items that are frequently purchased together. So imagine you run a supermarket and you have a lot of products on the shelf or an e-commerce uh, commerce store with a, large, with a large inventory. Your customers make transactions, which always include one or several items from your inventory. Naturally, once you have given a lot of transactions, uh, once you have accumulated a lot of transactions, you'll be interested to find out which combinations of products occur frequently. Even more, you will be interested in finding out which combinations are actually unexpected, which means they occur more often than you would have expected by chance. This information will put you in a very good position to make better use of your marketing budget for targeting, to place your products more efficiently, and to actively engage in cross-selling. So let's take a look at how we do this analysis in practice. We start with transaction data, which include list of items included in these transactions. To make our analysis simpler, we will focus only on whether an item was included in a transaction or not, as opposed to how many times it was purchased in a given transaction. The analysis will lead you from these individual transactions. Here we use a simple example with only five products, beer, vegetables, chocolate, and so on. These individual list of transactions, they lead you to association rules. Association rules will consist of item sets, and item sets are either individual items or a group of distinct items. Inside the association rules, the item sets will take the role of either antecedent or consequent. And that means that a consequent in an association rule implies that it has, it is per, if it's purchased, the antecedent has also been purchased already. So the purchase of the antecedent implies the purchase of the consequent. In our case, association rules could be the purchase of the item set. Bread implies the purchase of the item set beer, or the purchase of beer implies chocolate, or you can have more complex item sets on either side of the rule. For instance, the item set bread and beer implies the purchase of the item set apple, or even the item set apple and beer implies the, um, uh, the purchase of the item set chocolate and vegetables. Now that we have an idea where we want to go, let's take a look at how we evaluate these relative frequencies. To evaluate association rules, there are three key metrics. The first metric is support, also called prevalence. This simply measures how frequent are item sets, which means how often do they occur in the transactions relative to all transactions. This support metric can be calculated for individual products, where item sets contain one item, item sets contain multiple items, or entire rules. And if you apply this to rule, you simply calculate how often were all the constituents of the rule purchased together relative to all transactions. The next metric is confidence or predictability. That analyzes to which extent, um, given the purchase of the antecedent, is it likely that the consequent was also purchased? So if we already know the antecedent has been selected, how likely is it then that the consequent was purchased? Lastly, the third metric is list. And lift is key because it tells you how much more likely is this relationship, this association rule, 
than we would have expected by chance, taking into account the relative frequencies of consequent and antecedent together. These are the three key metrics, and we will now look at each of them in turn to identify how they are actually calculated in our context. Starting with support, to find out the support, we divide simply the number of transactions for the item set or the rule that we're interested in and divide it by the number of all transactions. So in our simple case, the support for bread, for instance, is four out of five transactions. Support for the item set vegetables and bread is two out of five. And the support for the rule, vegetables and bread as an item set, implies the purchase of the item set here is one out of five because the three items only occur in the first transaction together. The next metric is confidence, which tells us about the predictability of the consequent given the antecedent. To calculate confidence, you take the support for the transactions that involve both the antecedent and the consequence, so the support for the rule, and divide it by the number of transactions that involve the antecedent. So you divide the support for antecedent and consequent combined by the support for the antecedent. In our case, the confidence, for instance, for the rule, the item set red implies the purchase of the item set beer, the confidence is 2 out of 4 or 0.5. Similarly, the confidence for the rule, the item set apple and bread, leads to the item set beer is also 0.5, but derived from 1 out of 2. The last metric is lift. Lift is important because it tells us how much more likely are these associations than we would have expected by chance. To calculate the lift for a rule, we take the support for the rule and divide it by the product of the support for antecedent and consequent. In other words, we take the confidence in the rule and divide it by the support for the consequent. In our case, the lift of the rule, the item set bread, leads to the purchase of the item set beer, is 2 over 4 divided by 3 over 5, which is 5 over 6, which is less than 1. In contrast, the lift for the rule, the item set vegetable, leads to the purchase of the item set beer, is 2 over 3 divided by 3 over 5, which is 5 thirds, which is larger than 1. So in this context, the second rule will appear more interesting. The numerous challenges involved in dealing with market basket analysis or association rules more broadly. They can be very computational expensive because there are many potential rules to explore, especially when you use low thresholds. We will deal with the uh, look at the a priori algorithm shortly, which has managed to address this, uh, this challenge successfully. It's also important to keep in mind that association rules do not imply causality. Instead, you run into statistical errors. For instance, you could reject hypothesis, even though it's true, or you could accept it when it's false. The type 1 error is one where you accept rules that are not actually valid. The type 2 error is one where you ignore significant rules, so you miss them. Both are critical errors, and we need a framework to assess the statistical significance of rules so that we can deal with this. In addition, we have to also take into account that we are running a lot of tests, and we run into the so-called multiple comparison protest, uh, multiple comparison problem, which requires an adjustment to the thresholds that we use to accept or reject hypotheses. 